Oh, well, thanks for asking. Um, yeah, so um, we're interested in what you guys are doing. And I was wondering, you know, I, I got your email. Can you explain a little bit more like how this works? Yeah, so usually when somebody would like to like host an event, like a Revival Now event, they usually like find the venue. Um, they find like the volunteers um, that will be able to help the event like go forth. And if you want to do like worship, then you can also find like, um, I don't know if you are connected with the church that you can like bring the worship team mm -hmm. or she's also done events where there was no worship. It just went straight to her ministry. So either or can work. Okay. But basically, you know, when you want to put on an event, it's just basically the venue, um, finding people to help mm -hmm. and, you know, covering her travel costs. Okay. So it's pretty simple in that way. Okay. <laughs> to start but off. In the email it also said we have to cover your travel costs too. Yeah, so I'll be coming with her because she never travels by herself. So um, it would be two flights and two hotel rooms or an Airbnb. So two flights, two hotel rooms. Do you guys travel separate? Uh, we travel together. Why is it two flights? So for both of us. So you mean two tickets? Okay, so two tickets. Okay, yeah. Okay, so return trip. So three thousand dollars. You said is what the honorarium is for for her for her um, revival event. Right. Yeah. So okay. If you want to do one service, it would be three thousand. Okay, and how long does that service usually last? Well, I mean, it's dependent on how Holy Spirit usually moves. But let's say you do do worship, then it would be like thirty to forty minutes. Then she would minister for like fifty minutes, and then she would transition to deliverance time, which would probably be another fifty minutes. So probably like two and a half hours to three hours. Okay, we would have to provide the staff. Now, will she be needing any type of private security or anything like that for the event? Um, no, it's up to you if you want to do that. Okay. She would need like somebody to walk her like from. I mean, it depends where the venue is at and okay. if there's like a green room. But she would need somebody because people can bombard her. So if it's volunteers, like a couple of gentlemen to like walk her to and from the stage, like to the car, that could work too. Or if you want to do security, you can do that as well. What is what does Apostle prefer? She's fine with either or. Okay, perfect. And and your travel arrangements, how does this work out? Do we send you the money directly? Do we just book the arrangements and send you the itinerary? Um, well, usually for, for her honorarium, you would give it to her like at least before she leaves. Um, oh, so we got to give it to her before she leaves. Right, like before she flies back to L.A. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I thought you meant before she leaves L.A. that we would have to give her the honorarium. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. I was, yeah, I was about to like, whoa, wait a second. I don't think Jesus worked like that. You know? No, like before she leaves back to LA. So after the event. Okay. Perfect. And right. oh, so $3,000. And let me, let me check over the email here real quick. What did we say here? Now, is there any kind of written contract that needs to be signed? Yes. So, um, once you let me know that you would like to proceed, then I would send that to you and you can look over it. Okay. Basically, it's just so that there's like no cancellation as long as the public is made aware that she's going to be somewhere. Cause we've experienced that before where people have canceled an okay. event and people make plans, they fly and they drive. So she never cancels on people. So that's the only thing. Once the public is made aware that the event can't be canceled at that point. Okay. So let me see. You've got the, usually when a church or community, I'm going to read the email here. We're just, I want to make sure we're on the same page here. Yeah. So usually when a church, a community, or one person who is hungry for revival in their city or country wants to host an event with Apostle Catherine, they put together the whole event, finding a venue that can hold at least a thousand people. This can change depending where the event will be held. Yeah, this will be an outdoor event. It'll be like at a park revival like you guys do in LA. So it'll be, okay. it, yeah, it'll be an outdoor event. Yeah. And do you guys have any preference on where you like to eat? That way we know how much money to set aside for your, your meals and everything. Um, well, I can give you, like, kind of, like, a rough estimate of, based off of, like, our past events of how much, you know, we usually spend. Okay. Because she usually spends time um, just in preparation for the event and stuff like that. So she usually, like, orders to the hotel or to the Airbnb just to make things, like, easier as she's just in preparation. But, um, yeah. Okay. Um, getting so volunteers. Okay. Getting volunteers help during the event covering the cost for Apostle Catherine's travel expenses. 
This would include two flight tickets, two hotel rooms, any baggage and food fees. We can agree on a set amount. Lastly, the expenses would include her honorarium. So you'll be joining her as her assistant, hence the two flights and two hotel rooms. Her honorarium depends on how many services you would like her to do. For example, she usually receives 3000 for one service. So if we wanted her for an additional night, it would be times two. Um, she usually receives like 7000 for two services. And for three? Eleven. Okay. So it's eleven for three. Right. Ten for two, th one, three for one. Seven for two. Seven for two and eleven for three? Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this sounds good. If you want to send me over the contract, I'd be happy to look over it. And yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Since um, you want to do it in a park as well. Yeah. Like, um, would you be okay with like finding like a stage or getting a stage or I'm not sure if, if the park even has one, but it's always best for the stage to be like high enough and big enough so that, you know, if she brings people up on the stage, she can minister to them. If they fall back with the power of the spirit, that there's enough space that she can bring others to come and minister to and that people can see her. You know? Okay. Yeah. Cause we don't want anybody falling off stage when they fall backwards. Right. Yes, exactly. Has that, has that ever happened before? We always have somebody there, to, but oh, okay. uh, we have had a catcher fall off the stage. Oh, no, so that's not good. That's not a good thing. <laughs> okay. And uh, if I don't mind, can I ask a few background questions, too, as well? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, wh where is um, Apostles Church uh, based out of? L.A.? Los Angeles, yes. Okay. Where's her? Where's the church home base at? That's, it's in L.A. Right. But is there, like, an actual physical location? Okay. And it's in LA. What? Okay. So you guys actually have a physical building? Because I, I saw you guys were doing like a lot of open air revivals, correct, for a while? Yeah. I mean, it, it was like almost two years of us being in the park, but we just moved um, to a building just um, after Christmas. So, okay. Yeah. So now we are in a building in LA. Oh, okay. Awesome. What's, what's that building? I'd, I'd love to look into it and just, I'd like to do some of my own background if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. You can actually go on her Instagram page or okay. her Facebook page. She's posted lots of pictures of it, and so you can see everything about it. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. And now, where when did Apostle originally start uh, preaching? When was, where, what's her, yeah. like, lineage, I guess, like, how you would say it? So, um, she came from a really small town, mm -hmm. and she came to L.A., and then, um, she got prophesied to that she's called to be an apostle. So the ministry started, um, I believe, six years ago, around there. Who, and, who um, prophesied started, for her that she was going to be a prophet? It was a prophet who came to to the city to do a conference. What, what can prophet? Actually, I can actually... What was the name of the prophet? I'm just curious. I like to, I like to know like the lineage of these apostles. It's absolutely. a good thing. I can even like send you videos of her whole like testimony too, so you can really get in depth. But his name was Prophet Jor Davy. Okay, Prophet Jor Davy. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, and is she still like apostle under him? Is she still like uh, working under him? No, she's released. No, she's released. She is. Oh, he released she her. Has her own ministry, but she is, but he is her spiritual father. So, um, but she has her own ministry. Oh, okay, okay, great, great. Okay, and, and Apostle George Davy does he does he still teach and preach with Apostle Catherine? No, he has his own ministry in Tanzania. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. that's good. Okay, and when did when did she originally get prophesied to by him? Um, I don't have a date, but I can definitely send you that information. Okay. I, I would love to. Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, I, I'm just, I would like to know because I, I definitely want to have her. We, we really do. I think she's going to do great things. Um, we definitely have some people here, I think, who could use some deliverance. Um, but yeah, get me that contract over. I'll look over it. And if I have any questions, um, I'll go ahead and email you back with anything or just text or call you if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And if I could give some background about you as well, so how did you find out about the ministry? And what made you like want to know like, about Apostle Catherine and invite her? Well, yeah, we've been watching. Our church has been watching from here in Texas, watching her do her revival deliverances. And um, 